Hi everybody, it's Undead Oracle. So the project I have today is a Mermaid Pusheen hand-painted soap dispenser for my bathroom. And I'm going to try and walk you through some of the steps that I took in hopes that this is easy enough for you to follow so you could try this on your own. The first thing I did was took a piece of paper and freehanded the image I wanted onto it. Now, freehanding takes time, it takes patience. So there's no shame in just going online, finding a picture that you like, taking a piece of tracing paper, or I used white tissue paper, and tracing the image onto the tissue paper. Then you cut it to size, take some regular scotch tape, and tape the tracing paper onto the object that you are going to be painting. Then you get a sharpie, preferably fine tipped, black is probably the best color, and you trace the pencil lines on the tracing paper. What this does is the sharpie bleeds through the tracing paper and ends up onto the object that you are going to be painting. Now, once you're sure that you've gotten all of the pencil lines traced over a marker, you simply take the tracing paper off along with any of the tape. And what you're going to end up with is a rough outline. Now, there's going to be bleeding, there's going to be broken lines, it's not going to be perfect, there's even going to be some faded spots, this is all normal. What you're going to end up doing is painting over these lines with black paint or whatever color you decide you want your final outline to be even if you don't want an outline. This is just supposed to be a rough guideline as to where the final image is gonna end up. And there's no reason to get any crazy fancy acrylic paints, something very simple, water-based paint that you could get from any craft store will do just fine. I got this bottle at Walmart for like four or five bucks and I haven't had any issue with it at all. Make sure to give it a good shake and you're all ready to go. I also like to keep a cup of hot water to start out with, that way by the time I actually go to clean off my paintbrushes the water is still warm which helps clean the paint off a lot easier. I also keep a paper towel under my object to make sure I don't get anything onto my table. I have a bunch of different brushes. I have a paper towel to clean off the water from the brushes. And to start off doing the outline, I'm going to use a fine tipped detailing brush here. This makes it a lot easier to get those nice little lines. And now it's time to start doing the outline. Now the easiest way that I found to do this is to dip the very tip of the brush into the paint and just do very light gliding lines. No need to try and put any pressure on it, just very light little lines. I feel give you the most accuracy so that there's not too much to try and fix later on. Another thing to keep in mind too is how you are holding your object. There's no need to have a gorilla grip on it because these lines over here, the ones that aren't painted, will rub off with the sweat of your hand if you are holding it too tightly. I usually hold it just enough so that it won't fall out of my hands 
and that way I'm not rubbing off any of the guidelines because that's going to make it more difficult to paint later. Another thing that I have found helpful is to extend my pinky out and use it as like a rest on the object. That way my dominant hand is not rubbing against any of the paint that I have already put on to my object. I find this a lot easier and more stable to get those lines that are very close to the side that I'm painting on without risking smudging any of the paint that I have already applied. There are going to be times where you're going to have to fiddle around with where to grab your object when you're painting the other side. It takes me a few minutes sometimes to play around with how I'm going to hold something. Just so I can get a good angle and have good accuracy on how I'm painting the lines. And also looking on the other side for a good spot to rest my pinky where I'm still stable but not over stretching and causing any crooked or missed strokes. Another tip is to also have your original image close by so you can look back on it for reference because on an object that's round like this one, the bottom didn't quite line up properly and I kind of had to look back at my original picture and free paint the lines. So keeping that close by is definitely a good idea. Making sure you are in a nice comfy position is also key 
because you are gonna be sitting there for a while. This video was sped up. I spent hours painting this and I was fidgeting throughout some parts of this because I started getting uncomfortable. So comfiness is key. You're gonna be there for a while. And there we have it. That is the first layer of outline. I left these smaller details unpainted because I plan on just having those as solid color with no outline. That is a personal decision that I thought would look best on the final image. And this is a full view. I'm going to stop this video here and the next one will be the first layer of color. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you in my next video.